team's turn to ban. Dire team's turn to ban. Hello, hello, and welcome back to game number three of UC Irvine versus UC Davis in this Dire first week band. of Collegiate Star League. I'm joined yet again by Gorgon the Wonder Cow. Dire team's this time, hopefully, through the entirety of the game and no crashes. Knock on wood, please. How are you doing, my friend? Gorgon is MIA. No worries. In the meantime, we'd like to reiterate, apologies for the tech issues. Believe they are fixed. Did a full system reboot. However, has only happened today with Dota. So no promises if the stream do does go down again. We will be most likely switching observers. That being said, um, as I wait for Gorgon to return from the land, or to the land of the living. First pick Sand King, here for UCI. And who can fault them after a performance like that? Quite the pick. It was yeah. devastating to the timber saw. Welcome back, Gorgon. Hey, thanks. Uh, it, these continued connectivity issues are, are giving me a little, a uh, little bit of a fright here. Um... So, yeah, the Sand King was, was, I'm honestly surprised that Sand King was not worth banning for them. Of course, they're probably not going to cho choose a solo melee offlaner uh, this time. Ten seconds and <laughs> that may help them out a little bit. And knowing that the Sand King, I mean, remaining. part of the the bulk of the issue, honestly, with Sand King is that he got off to such a Reserve good start, time. right? If you don't give him that good start, maybe that player is not quite as scary. But he had so much momentum along with the rest of his team that it became unstoppable. Absolutely. And it's just such a bully of a laner, you know? it's The Timbersaw died once, and he just couldn't re-enter that lane. Every time he tried, it was just another death, another death. So I'm going to see the right. axe this time around. And, well, That's presumably going to be that jungle axe that we'd seen earlier. Um I really think that UC Davis need to think very carefully before they run a jungler here. Last game, arguably, they went down because they were being too greedy with their craft and not getting a full support. Um, instead, going in for a straight uh, jungler would... I mean, that that is the definition of a greedy draft, right? You just you want that much more teams core hero with real estate. I'm gonna move into a lion to round out the first phase. Safe support. Good support. Uh, not much else to say about that. I mean, we're assuming the same King's going off lane. Again, he could do pretty much everything other than the hard farming one position. Five but... seconds remaining. Yeah, you don't usually see him in the mid lane because he doesn't provide very much in way of hard push, and you often would like your mid laner to give you some sort of sustain on that, unless your safe laner does. And I very much doubt we see him in the jungle. Uh, the ways of old. Right. It, it's just, once again, it's a little too greedy, and it, it, it worked out so well for them in the off lane. Uh, they may want to consider running that aggressive tri lane again, especially if remaining. their opponents are potentially going to be running a jungle axe. The Five best way to remaining. punish a jungler is by running an aggressive tri lane. Right, you force that jungler mm -hmm. to come out in the lane and get even less experience, even less time. gold, and you really shut him down through the, the entire portion of the laning phase and the, the middle portion of the early game. Huskar band coming out here. I feel like once once Oracle's picked, Huskar is just a, a reaction oh, band. Like you instantly lose one band because it, it's devoted to Huskar. <laughs> yeah, I, I... There are a lot of bands devoted to UC Davis Edge, as we mentioned before. Huskar the, the is band. the third most played hero of one of these players. I, I no longer have all of their stats up in front of me because of the uh, connectivity problems that we've been having with Dota, forcing me to restart remaining. my computer. But I do recall that somebody's been spamming it uh, pretty substantially throughout the bulk of his career. And this isn't the only team in CSL that has a dedicated Huskar player. The uh, second place team from last year, University of Michigan, uh, has a now retired due to graduation Huskar player that ran uh, a pretty Radiant scary Huskar in the <laughs> semifinals uh, last year as well. So certainly a hero beloved in the league. He's very Huskar in general is a very weird pick. And the introduction of Oracle absolutely made him playable in a sense, but Huskar used to fill a very similar role as Broodmother, where it was just 
if you can last pick it, you are guaranteed the win. Because it's just, if you don't have the tools to deal with a Huskar, it's, it's just impossible. Yeah. So, <laughs> with the Oracle, Huskar has plenty of tools, so well-warranted ban. Uh, funny enough, the Ogre is banned here. UCI has been the one playing that, so... Yeah, it is interesting. I would not expect UC Davis Agis to, to pick up the Ogre at all here. There, there's no real incentive to get it. There are plenty of heroes that have the stun. The Ogre's not particularly popular at their level of play. It, it is something that we even thought was a little odd for, uh, for UCI, but it was a comfort pick. Now, I had also mentioned the Morphling in Draft 1, I think, maybe Draft 2, that somebody on UC Davis Agis, uh, two people actually, have been spamming it in pubs. Um, it is a comfort pick. It is something that they like to go into. And once remaining. again, you see Davis Agi is really, what it comes down to is Five they love to run remaining. these heroes that require a decent amount of farm and then just get, just go straight Reserve baller mode. Time. And so for UCI, I think another strategy that doesn't allow UC Davis Agi to actually scale into that stage of the game is probably the best way to go. Very true, and first Morphling of the day, pretty excited. Uh, UC Davis is very much a fan of Morphling, I would say. Uh, get, didn't you say their insight on the Morphling, something around like their most picked hero? Was it something along those lines? Yeah, one of these players has a lot, a lot of games, like hundreds of games on the Morphling, including many recent games. Um, He's just like, been such a quarter a, to half of his recent games. So. Uh, such a menace this patch, right? Like he's been nerfed after nerfed after nerfed, and he's still as threatening as ever. The Morphling. So excited to see him in the game here, uh, first of the day for the Morphling. Well, you know, in terms of pubs, Morphling isn't really at a stage, and even in professional though, he's not really mm -hmm. at a stage where he's particularly remaining. feared. Um, he does lose substantially more Five than he wins remaining. in all skill brackets except the highest of all skill brackets um but what what Reserve really time. gives uc davis at gc advantage with that is that they have a specialist right and they're playing against teams this isn't like a pub so you don't necessarily have to worry about a hero is a little bit less uh strong than an equivalency right here um uc davis Agis do have more experience as a team than their opponents. They also have more experience as individual players than their opponents uh, on average. And they're going to try to leverage that to Dyer using King's their comfort turn. heroes in order to create as much advantage as possible just in a technical sense of the game. Man, more new picks. I am digging this draft. We have had a plethora of new picks here right now, and I'm super excited to see this Beastmaster. Uh, I particularly like it into the Sand Five King. Seconds remaining. Sand King, like we mentioned before, is everywhere on the map against UC Research Davis. Time. So no. Beastmaster, with the Hawk in particular, should allow them to at least play a bit more defensive in scouting out where the Sand King will be and will be coming from. So I definitely like the Beastmaster pick here, and then against Lifesteal, it's pretty pretty decent as well. It does reinforce some of my fears here that it does look like we're going to have, unless that's a support Beastmaster, which I, I don't necessarily expect. It's not something we see very often. Uh, presumably either Beastmaster or Axe are going into the jungle and the other one's going into the off lane. So you see Davis Agis running a, um, a very greedy draft here and into a life stealer who is a hero that doesn't need that much to get going considering he is a, a one spot core. And the potential Storm Spirit Bomb or the Sand King Bomb. Uh, you know, running a very greedy draft is a little concerning. And I, I would like to see UC Davis Edgies grab themselves a mid laner that pushes in, in order to make sure that they're at least able to, to get out a bit of early gold lead Ten from Towers. Remaining. And that would help kind of leapfrog them into that stage at the end that they're really hoping Five to get into. Remaining. I'm going to get rid of Silencer. Um, that hmm. Silencer is quite good against Morphling, but yeah. that's really the only reason that you might want to get rid of it here. Mm -hmm. Unless Dyer they're... Yeah, and they have last pick, so their mm -hmm. Silencer wouldn't be a response. And Bounty Hunter, once again, a really Radiant good response to, to a potential jungler, especially if it is an Axe. Um, axe is pretty reliant on uh, dropping Tranquils, and with the Bounty Hunter hanging around, he can't really do that. 
<laughs> and of course, you have the life stealer bomb from Invis as well. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of synergy. Yeah, they have that. a lot of tools for this life stealer to get in and out of fights. And bounty hunter with track. If you thought last game was snowbally, this is uh, this game has a bit more potential to do so. That being said, I think UC Davis is drafting with that in mind. Templar assassin will round it out. Lucky going back to the track and true Templar. Yeah, greedy again. They. Don't really have anything that's going to be hanging out in the mid lane that take off those refractions, at least. So Templar Assassin should do fine in the mid lane, barring any serious Sand King rotations. Sand King is going to be probably one-on-one -on -one if UCI play this right. Sand King shouldn't end up in a one-on-one -on -one against a melee hero, which is how he got snowballed so hard last time. And UCI are basically running the same type of draft right they need to get off to an early lead if they get off to an early lead they could just absolutely tear away with the game if you see davis edges are are able to buy enough time in order to get going then it is very difficult for uci to deal with the overwhelming force that comes out of a more flame beast remain. master templar assassin axe for a core yeah. draft. oh lord that is a beefy front line right there and... all right gorgon game three Winner takes all. Why don't you break us down for UC Davis? All right, for UC Davis, we've got Lucky57 reprising that Templar Assassin. Ms. Pig is taking Axe for a spin. Hope is calling out his friends on the Beastmaster. BG is shifting around on the Morphling, and Chocobo is prognosticating our future on the Oracle. <laughs> prognosticating? That's a good word. It's a college league. You know, yeah, that's true. We got a... A little bit of that lexicon. I'm, I'm digging it, Gorgon. <laughs> Glad you have me aboard here. On the Bounty Hunter, we have the two Chinese characters. On the Sand King, we have the five Chinese characters. On the Storm Spirit, we have C2. On the Life Steer, we have Mayor Kual. And finally, last but not least, on the Lion, we have the five Chinese characters. Was Sand King six? They're both five? I must have misspoken <laughs> earlier. There's my apologies. The, the, my my official stance is if you want the casters to say your name, ask if they speak the language that your name is in first. Very because, true. Uh, you know. Or just send me the pronunciation. Let me butcher it a little. That, I'm okay with yeah. that. Yeah. The, the, there's a, a distinct danger in the Chinese characters' pronunciation because then you still have to worry about the tonality, though. You know? I'd rather sound oh, like a fool, man. though, than say five Chinese characters, two Chinese characters, you know? <laughs> I'll take the hit. I'd rather sound like a fool than sound like a fool is all I heard. So we do actually have <laughs> a, a really nice uh, ward here. And I, I think UCD may be aware that that ward is there because they saw the bounty hunter coming out of these trees here like that. Uh, but they didn't actually see him necessarily place the ward down. Uh, and that does, in fact, block this camp down here. Oh, can't do it because it's paused. Can you uh, not draw your phone? Oh, that's a bummer. I could, but I can't anymore. Here we go. There we go. That camp is going to be blocked by that. So yep. that's going to shut down the jungler, whoever it is, unless they decide to just use this offlane camp, which will probably be the, the, the way to go. Um, and that just allows that sand king to have more control over this lane. Stupendous. And they are not going to, in fact, do an aggressive lane here. They are going to give the sand king a one-on-one -on -one against the morphling. That's something Morphling should be able to handle, basically. Yeah, this is definitely more doable than the last lane of uh, the Timber Saw. That was yeah. particularly brutal. Yeah, well, once again, that was a very armor-dependent <laughs> defensive strategy into a largely magical damage mm -hmm. offense. And we, we saw how that worked. A uh, very nice block, though, coming out of the sand. Look at this equilibrium that he's getting in his off. Oh, wow. That is absolutely stellar. It's very rare for you to see an offlaner get off to that good of an equilibrium start. And he's just going to reap the rewards from this. Uh, we, we gave Morphling the benefit of the doubt. That being said, look at Axe here. Maybe in a bit of trouble. Uh, nah, he'll be for... Level 1 bounty only has the stealth. Not too much yeah. to follow out with, but... They got tabs on him. Yeah, as long as Axe is being spotted, though, when he does get low enough, that the, the bounty hunter will be able to come out and grab him. Bounty hunter being very patient here, presumably expecting. I'm not sure what he's expecting. Maybe for the the camp to be reused here on the spawn, but just wanted to make sure that the wildebeest, I guess, didn't go. <laughs> either way. Taking care of the camps. Eh? 
Like so, it. as we kind of break down into this landing phase, the Oracle is going to come down and defend the Morphling. That's a good call, because even though the Morphling is ranged, Sand King is going to be able to close that gap quite a bit. And in order for the Morphling to be able to last it, he does want to hold on to a decent amount of his agility. He doesn't really want to be holding on to a lot of strength in this stage in the game, and having the Oracle here is going to allow him to do that. Bounty Hunter continuing to, to kind of play at both ends of the coin here, trying to watch the axe, but also looking for the courier snipe. Uh, the bottle is very important to the Templar Assassin's laning potential, and so if the Bounty Hunter is able to stop that bottle from getting out, that that could be a pretty substantial boon. Oh, this, is probably good. Yeah, this may be the best chance Bounty gets. Axe does not have call for another two seconds in that... Is not enough time. First blood. Honestly, going away. Be you see better that. diving into these creeps and hoping that one of them got the right yeah, click. Yeah, very true. And Bounty's going to pick himself up an Invisibility Rune. Um, what's interesting about an Invisibility Rune on a level 2 Bounty Hunter is A, it allows him to potentially Sniper Courier without ever being seen other than the Fade Time. And B, it does allow him to come out, uh, attack with the Janata, and then get a bonus Shadow Walk attack before going into Shadow Walk, and then another follow-up Shadow Walk attack, right? So uh, between those, he can be perfectly untargetable for a decent period of time, but still get a 150% critical, and then the additional uh, 60 damage, I think it is, from the <laughs> from the fade time manipulation on that, um, on that Shadow Walk. So we actually, for this stage in the game, an extra 60 plus 150% critical in relative safely is, is pretty good. Uh, but we haven't really talked about the safe lane too much here for the life stealer. He is sitting on top of our last hits and nice. The Beastmaster doesn't really have the tools to zone him out. Yeah. And that has allowed the lion to really kind of float around in this jungle and take a look around. He does have now some sentry wards and an observer ward. And Axe has actually been forced into his opponent's jungle, hoping to scrape the bounty hunter off. And bounty is looking for him. We'll find him thanks to the lion no. sitting on this high ground. This is... Probably kill him to make it. Stun goes first. The call will land, so Lion will eat a bit of damage here. No, actually runs away, but with Storm roaming up, Storm actually does not go for the kill. It looks like Axe just. This is going to be a chase. Uh, and a long chase at that. Or going to try to himself, himself, himself. And this time he does hang out. And uh, yeah, a neutral creep kill is going to be on the Oracle, but it is not yep. on the Axe. Very close with that Hadouken, though. Uh, it, you could kind of tell that that axe had a, a pretty decent idea of what was mm -hmm. going on there. Um, when you get three heroes near the Seder Tormentor, he'll automatically Hadouken. He'll automatically throw that shot, yep. but not without three units. So with two heroes chasing you, you are you have a pretty good chance of self-denial there. Uh, if you only have one hero chasing you, you've got a pretty low chance because oh. those don't have a high right. Lucky is in trouble in the mid lane. Lion is here. Easy support rotations come in. CT is going to need a little bit of damage. Oh, actually runs back into the Purifying Flames and dies. Probably was not expecting that much damage. Regardless, it's a mid for a mid. Yeah, and the TA went down first, right? You're yeah. okay giving some farm to a, an Oracle. This is one of the heroes that does the least with farm out of oh. all the heroes. Sand King. The heroes in the pool, let alone in this game. Bit caught out there. Bit too aggressive on the Morphling, and little did he know that Axe was in the area. So, that would be a kill going the way of the Morphling. Yeah, they, they really, UCI needs to be very careful here. They need to be very collected. They're doing a good job so far, but they cannot be giving up kills uh, at this stage of the game. Really, until they are getting track gold and sitting substantially ahead, they can't be giving up even trades. Storm actually cannot evade... Fortunes and not needed. Gets out A-OK, -okay, has the bottle as well. Bounty now lurking bot. This is interesting. Probably nothing to come of it, but he may stumble into the axe yet again. Yeah, he's looking for the axe. He just kind of wants to hang out around the guy and, and leak some experience. Um, what, what I was trying to say there, though, is that life is going to become an issue here. The, the Beastmaster is still not really able to contest him. He's sitting on 43 last hits and 19 denies at 6 minutes, right? He's almost sitting on a perfect uh, creep score. The streak continues. We're just going to watch it. Actually, I think Bounty's... Yeah, Bounty's making a move on the Oracle here. I hear the Sand King ult going off at the same time. Goes on to the Axe. Doing a good bit of damage. Actually, not enough to finish off the kill for now. Templar Assassin's in the area. Axe is dust. 
Gets the Bounty Hunter kill. Now Sand King's in trouble as Morphling moves in. Looks like he'll get out A-OK, -okay, but turn of events there for UCI, and UC Davis gets the better of that fight. Yeah, it's really unfortunate for UCI. They don't need to be getting kills here to be doing well. You know, like, they could just be leeching experience from the axe and slowing them down. Letting the lifestealer get off to a good start and waiting for those base core items on the lifestealer. Usually he needs two. Um, so he'll get an armlet and an echo saber or something like that. Basically any two core items. It doesn't really matter what your build is as long as it's a combat oriented build. And he's ready to go. If you, if you wait for that moment and just take really obvious opportunities to get kills, um, the TA is really going to be your only issue in this game for the period between 12 minutes and 20 minutes. And, and that's really where they, they want to go out and start getting track kills and start really leveraging this early to mid game advantage. Um, I, I feel like they may have engaged a little bit too early here and, and having given up a couple of kills, now they are finding themselves dove and this bounty, this bounty is very high. dead. Although Axe might die as well, Roar goes out onto the line so he just runs to his own death but Backup has arrived in the form of Sand King. I don't think he could do much here, though. Dust is popped as well. No Sandstorm for you. Ah, that's three kills going the way you see Davis. And once again, it, just UCI, a little too eager to get into these engagements. The Bounty Hunter is staying a little bit too far forward. He's fallen behind at this point. Like, the damage has been done. So, there's not a lot of gain for him to be out and about at this point. What's he going to do? He does not have the damage to secure kills unless somebody's all but dead anyway. Um, yeah, he, he really could just stand to leech a little experience from a lane until he gets six, or maybe go up to this life suit and help the life suit get a kill. Lucky's he is going to hang out here. Lucky's going to aggress on the storm. Him, it like. They do know Roar is down, albeit not for much longer. Decided not to make a move, and probably for the wiser. Yeah, they're just waiting for the next Shadow Walk, I think. They, they want to get Hope out away from this tower, and the the lane equilibrium should shift in their favor here with the next two waves. Oh, they're going to go uh, earlier, though. Still no Roar available for him. He's getting low. Not low enough. Shuriken should be up soon. Not soon enough. They're going oh. awfully deep for this one. Turn onto the bounty, and he's more likely the guaranteed kill. Although he does dodge the Meld Strike, Lifesteal is just going to TP out. It's going to have yeah. to be no dust on the axe. He's going to have to randomly call. No, it doesn't even risk it. That's a really nice TP from the Lifestealer, too. You notice that he didn't panic and TP back to his fountain. Even though he's low on mana, he TP'd back to his tier 1, so he could immediately start a farm. Like, that's the sort of very small difference in play that you see between you know, like a 4.5k player and a 5.5k player. You're really starting to see some of the individual skill and decision making um, that have made these teams two of the the what I would say uh, more. We have higher expectations of these teams. Than yeah, the absolutely. Teams in the league, right. In the meantime, there was a Sand King kill bot trying to farm a camp, and he was just caught out with too low health. And uh, the Sand King, not as scary early as. As we uh, remember from the last game, that that was something else. Though I think that's more the exception rather than the rule. Roshan, however, uh, just wailing on Oracle. I heard sounds. Looks like a move is going to be made mid on the TA. Sanking's in position. We'll get the stun. Storm is in as well. Lucky. Had Refraction up, but is going to eat the bulk of the ult. And oh man, Bounty TP's into his death. Pardon, Beastmaster TP's into his death. Bounty getting the track kill. Two kills and a track. Most likely a tower as well. Oh, it's full health. Probably not. But all in all, UCI going to be pretty happy with that. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Gorgon has disconnected. Apologies. In the meantime, while he reconnects, we'll just take a gander. Axe is not close to his blink yet. He has not suffered any intermediate items. He kind of just has the Iron Talon 
Oh, Sand King spots him out. Gets called. Oh, there's too much backup in the air, though. The double stun from Lion catching two. Track will get the axe kill. Cannot get the track on Oracle, but at the end of the day, it's not needed. However, Storm in a heap of trouble here. No mana to speak of. Evades around the TA. He's going to run right towards her, though. Wow. The Storm manages to juke the TA around the mid-tower. Very... <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Very well played from the stone there. No mana to speak of either. Moving up to the top lane. The life Stealer has had a ball of a time. Morphling is a bit more net worth, mostly from railing on the Sand King that just occasionally dies in his jungle, but Life Stealer doing a okay for himself in the meantime. Dyer's bottom tower is being chipped away. Try to get Gorgon back in here. Apologies for the delay. It's been a night of technical difficulties, but such is life. There's a finger coming out before the refraction. Oracle's ult is burned. False promise used. Oh, Roar will come onto the line. He is almost assuredly dead. Storm is no more mana. Beastmaster will be the play here. No way to cancel it. He's out of there. One for nil, favoring UCI. A, a good idea from UC Irvine. Not executed quick enough, however, and the TA will live. Meanwhile, bot lane, however, Morphling tracked up. Possibly dead here. Bounty does not want to break out stealth yet. There he goes. He gets the shuriken. I'm not sure that was a track, though. I think the track may have worn off. Regardless, Morph is dead, and that is a very good kill for UCI. And they stumble right into an oracle. No mana for shuriken, so it's going to be hard to track this guy down. Bro Strike will latch, but... Fate's Edict will stop that one in its track. All in all, aggression from UCI late paying off. Relative lull in the action. However, it does look like UCI is poised to take this mid tower. Or at least the life of the TA, who is being tower. fairly careful right now. Gonna wait to stack this camp and probably take it again. In the meantime, this is giving UC Davis plenty of time to farm with so many heroes stacked mid. And, uh, they're gonna run right into the Sand King. Actually cancels the ultimate. No do 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 today. Bounty evades the Melt Strike. Good call there. This is Epicenter, not Sandstorm. I don't know what I'm talking about. Regardless... Moving into the mid lane here. Not too much UCI could do. UC Davis is just in this spot, this awkward spot where they, they're able to fight just slightly better than UC Irvine. And Storm is not in fighting shape just yet. Lifestealer has not hit the Echo Saber, and it's, it's not good. Axe, dem demoing the blink to get out alive here. Curious, to say the least. Hmm. They do know that it's blocked, however, they, they... Okay, they just found it. TA will clear it, however, that ward had mere seconds on it, so... Sentry all but wasted, in my mind. Um. Radiance bottom tower's got problems. Mid tier one to focus now for UC Davis. This one should go down relatively quietly. Bounty's here to delay. Oh, there you are, Gorgon. You are going to start to, to worry about the fact that this Morphling is starting to get going. This TA is starting to get going. Granted, the TA is only sitting on a Blightstone. But... And there are not Ancient Sacks, which is going to slow down the TA. Oh. Oh. Beastmaster just got ripped to shreds. The Lion gave him the business, and he's just gone. Pretty sure Storm will get out alive, but Lion is all but... All but food for this in, impending UC Davis team. No, he does have really. Be lion. It's nighttime, so it's hard to see him. He is going to grab a TP. He does have a smoke if he needs it to escape as well. Well, he's going to get out handily against my expectations, and pretty big yeah. considering he's getting ever so closer to that blink dagger. Yeah, nighttime vision is like if that were happening right now, he would be dead for sure. Um, but the Lincoln Sphere is just about done here on the Morphling, and at that point in time, I'm not really sure that there's anything in this game that's particularly scary, uh, uh, at least scary enough to stop 
we see deep from pushing on to these tier ones. Um, the Echo Saber did just get finished on the Life Sealer, and remember, I Ooh. said two core items on the Life Sealer. He should be ready to engage. Wait, call the Dunk will actually miss, and Life Sealer is running for his life. Infest into the bounty. They end his and get out. No dust to speak of. Oracle was too far away. It's going to miss, and now they're scot free. They're scouting out, and looks like Storm's in the area. Oh, he's just trying to escape. Ooh. Oh, they're, they're going to try to get this kill, it looks like. Yeah, they're that was... Way too ballsy. Yeah, that was... An odd time to break the invis. They, they probably thought that their team would be chased down. Meanwhile, bot lane... Oh, Sand King. Sandstorm with a sliver of health. It's going to be okay. Yeah, so... It is nice that the, the Life Stealer is at a stage where he should be able to start being aggressive. It... We'll see if he wants to hang out and farm more, or if he does have the actual awareness and discipline to get in with his team and, and start being aggressive. Maybe open up a touch bit more of space for the Storm to get that Bloodstone finished um, would be a big step in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks like a Ever so is closer. actually going to be yeah. cast uh, by the line at all. Yep, there, there we go. go. And they're going to roam his four... Potentially baiting out the storm, just letting the storm farm. Otherwise, storm can always engage with the soul ring ball lightning. So, the scan will catch him. Sand King, on pure intuition, goes for it. False promise does get off, so Oracle won't drop at least immediately. Dunk will miss again, but Storm is dead. It is too late. Axe is also dead. Oracle pops. Sand King goes in onto the Morphling, does a good amount of epicenter damage, but decides to leave. All in all, it looks like it'll be a two-for-one favoring UC Irvine. Yeah, considering UC Irvine spent a smoke on that, as well as the rotation of their entire team, that's not as big of a game as you might have wanted if you were them. And, and it really comes down to the fact that they had their smoke popped while on low ground here. That's, that's what prompted that Sand King to, to blink up onto the high ground very suddenly. Um, oh. Instead of going around a, a more standard route... Uh, where they don't actually have to deal with as much high ground disadvantage on vision. Um, they decided to go straight down the middle, and uh, it worked out for them, but I can't help but wonder if they'd be better off if they had gotten three heroes for none because they took a, a less direct route. You know? Very true. And I'm just now catching the OBS ward in the mid lane, which probably gave Sand King all the vision he needed. So Yeah, and it did just expire as well. So. Mm -hmm. And they are thinking about trying to grab this Beastmaster. I think that that would be a good call. You want to slow him down before he gets that Necronomicon going. And moreover, oh. he's the easiest target. Back up in the oh, area. Then. <laughs> Bounty's just dead. Yeah. And once again, the Life Stealer being forced to use him fast to get away. Not really engaging in any sort of effective way here. This is the period of time where the Life Stealer is supposed to be dominating the field supposed to be forcing people back toward their base and, and taking control knocking down towers. It's just not working for, for UCI. So even though they are ahead in kills, and they are arguably slightly ahead in terms of control in this game, I don't see that being the case very much longer. At least not without some pretty substantial swings in favor of UCI. Mm -hmm. um, you know, UCD drafted greedy, but they haven't been that heavily punished for it so far. All in all, game pretty even. A net worth difference hanging around zero. It's yeah. been close and pretty balanced so far. Smoke coming out from UCI. Looking to make a play. However, if they path this poorly, they're going to run right into the entire team of UC Davis. They're taking a different route. This is a, a much better smoke route. Not only is it going to allow them to drop down some vision, but it's going to allow them to wrap oh. around behind their opponents, which is really what they want. Storm, roared, rooted, and okay, redumped. Never mind. They don't want to engage us anymore. The storm got picked off. Yeah, it's... They need to back out. Yeah. As you had mentioned, this is a pretty even game state for the two teams, but unfortunately, based on the projection of future game states, even is really, really bad for UCI. Oh, good positioning by the Axe there. Actually will save his Beastmaster's life. Gets the call off just in time. Almost surely the Sand King would have died, but saving the Beastmaster there. Pretty good result for UC Davis. Yeah, an epicenter too. Like, that was mm -hmm. an epicenter for nothing. Um, and, and UCD are really in a very good position to roll away with this. A little bit of extra tower gold from now. And you're talking blade mail done on the Axe as well as... The Desolator seems to be done on the TA and is probably coming out. 
She should have more gold than this, so I assume that it's coming out on the courier. Oh, blink call on the bounty. Good day, sir. You are dead. Stun is too late. And... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the the life sealer is not getting nearly enough mileage for this stage in the game, and he looks like he's building a desolator himself. He's going for all damage, but I'm not entirely sure that more damage is really going to help him. He's been forced back because of a lack of survivability in the face of two, three, four cores uh, so far this game. He really needs somebody else on his team to get the initiation potential that they need, and the storm getting a blood zone would be a big step in the right direction, unfortunately. That's not going to come out until the Morphling's about ready to start engaging. There is a Lincoln's, by the way, sitting on the Morphling. Has been for a couple of minutes now, I believe. And he's just ready to go start popping people. With Axe moving up to the top lane here, and Lifestealer sitting in the wave of creeps, the Blink Call comes in. Good amount of damage being dealt, but he will rage through it. Armlet up, and he is out of there. A lot of damage dealt. Not quite enough, though. Yeah, but what was the overall cost in the Morphling? It was nothing. Absolutely. Like, there was no... Oh. They used a replicate. Another roar on the storm. The life stealers in the area as well. He will fall the call on the bounty. It was blind, but he's dead. Oh, and then the psionic trap will catch too. Doesn't look like they will want to chase. Three for nil favoring UC Davis. I'm not positive that they have any track gold so far. There was one. I, I guarantee there was one. You know, the, the uh, cosmetic that he uses also makes track look different, which is... Uh, I always like, confuse it for false promise, and I don't know yeah. why. It, I was making the same same thing. So I, I've not seen that particular cosmetic a whole lot. So. Tripping me up, man. Well, this we looks to be... <laughs> make the game as confusing as possible sometimes. <laughs> Pretty easy tower. Go in the way. UC Davis. I mean, we've been calling this all game, right? Absolutely. Projecting on future game saves, there's just no way that UCD should have been given this amount of space. And, and there's no way that UCI should have jumped the gun as heavily as they did. And they're really being punished for it now because uh, with the, the Life Sealer unable to, to move because a couple of his teammates made some bad uh, missteps. And now those teammates are behind. If the Life Sealer's teammates were caught up to where they should be, then the Life Sealer would have the compatriots that he would need in order to, to go and actually get something done here. Um, but they, they were really greedy for kills uh, in the laning phase instead of just trying to get into the mid game um, as quickly as possible. Blink call from Axe narrowly missing the lion there. Fast fingers on that blink will keep him alive. But um... And uh, Sand King's continuing to farm up in the jungle here. I, I mean, UCI are doing a good job of moving around the map safely unfortunately they're doing a very bad job of maintaining control of the map they're just kind of roaming as a pack and hoping for the best <laughs> apologies for silence there quite the noisy environment at the moment however it looks like uc davis is establishing control around the pit they know the bounty's there dust will go out it misses however in the mid lane yet again storm is caught Looks like he'll get out alive this time. Axe will not be so lucky. One for nothing, and jumping the gun now on the well, side of UC Davis. It's probably going to be one for Roche, right? The Axe is too far forward, but he's too far forward in a way that pushes his opponents off of Roshan and gives them a pretty easy grab at it. Um, I don't think there's anything that they can do to try and engage on this. With the Bloodstone, maybe the Storm Sphere tries. Yeah, it just goes down too fast. So that actually ends up being a pretty good trade for the Axe. Oh, Lucky eating a lot of damage here from the Life Stealer. He should get healed up in time. Bounty does die in the end here. Oh, almost taken out from the Shotgun Blast. It looks like the rest of UC Irvine will get out. Maybe not the Lion. Storm and Life Stealer up on the hill. Lion is, in fact, dead. This fight is falling apart for UC Irvine. Life stealer low. Lucky low health goes, blinks in, gets stunned up. Refraction is up, so he should be okay. In fact, he is. Morph looking for more. All they'll get is two in the end, and two is plenty considering they just got that Aegis. So let's talk about some of the things that UCI do not have in this game, really, right? They don't have solid high ground defense. Um, they, they don't have, like, the X Storm combo in order to really utilize that ball lightning for high ground epicenter is very uh long cooldown 
The bounty hunter doesn't provide a lot for high ground defense. Uh, they they don't really have it. They also don't have any natural source of illusions in order to stop the TA from rolling around. Because remember, Cyblades stop at illusions. So illusion-based heroes or heroes that build Manta style can be really good at shutting a TA down, especially on a high ground, where he's not going to be as selective about which units he's hitting first and which he's hitting with Cyblades. Um, the entire team... Uh, in a high ground defense is basically going to be sitting behind this wall of creeps that have very low armor and uh, the the TA is going to have his pick of the litter for which heroes he wants to target with the side blades behind it which means the damage output from this TA is going to be substantially larger than the 200 damage that's even listed it's going to be you know 300 to 350 damage a hit if he's able to angle the side blades correctly that's pretty astronomical when you think about it. With all the ways that UC Davis can get into the fight, be it a root, blink call, just Beastmasters, anything. It's just they, they have a lot of ways to get this TA in a position to do a lot of damage. Yeah. Morphling is actually standing on, on top a ward. Oh, he replicates out at the last second, and now UC Irvine scatters to get back. That is such a ballsy play. Holy moly. Yeah. This is... This is at... We're, we are officially at the point, really, where it takes UCD getting overly aggressive and finding themselves out of position. Uh, uh, barring just an amazing invest bomb play. Like, really well-coordinated, followed by a perfect epicenter, but... Epicenter is only level 2, and I honestly don't think that's going to provide enough damage to really deter anything. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone. Um, <laughs> pardon the auto camera there. Bit of a bug on my end, but it should be fixed now. Storm is dead. Towers are dying. Barracks are dying. And UC Davis is absolutely in the driver's seat. Yeah, this, there, there's just honestly not a lot that can be done for UCI. They, they need UCD to make a mistake. And granted, they can position themselves in a way to try and bait their opponents in. But, oh, the uh, blink call from Axe catches three. Blade mail as yeah. well. Tons of damage. Dunk will miss. It doesn't even matter. That's three dead. The Sand King's going to fall as well. Good game well played is called. UC Davis takes the series two to one. Yeah, a, a really nice series. I mean, it was pretty even through a good chunk of it. Uh, unfortunately, UCI, they, they really... They played for the moment and not for the future, and against UCD, that is a very, very, very dangerous proposition. They do like late-game heroes, they do like greedy drafts, and you have to, have to hit them hard for it right as you're leaving the lighting phase. And hopefully other teams are watching and can kind of get that playbook ready for when UCD comes knocking at their doors. And for the first time today, Gorgon, I have successfully made it through a game. I have access to these wonderful graphs now, and it's uh, it's spectacular to watch. We were talking a lot about the Lifestealer early. He just had so much time to farm, he had all the space in the world, and then he teetered off. He wasn't able to make the same plays that the Morphling was making, and he, he felt confined to be moving either with the Storm or with the Bounty. Yeah, well, I mean, the the Lifestealer didn't have a support cast that was doing well, and the... And the Morphling did, right? Like, Morphling Absolutely. just, that the, the Radiant side team just had more resources because they drafted more resources. They drafted it on futures. They paid a lot in the beginning of the game to get a better return later in the game, and there was just not the punishment there. Uh, Life Stealer is a hero that is absolutely difficult to handle if he gets off to the sort of farming start that this one did. But he's not that hard to handle if you've got three heroes to deal with them <laughs> because your opponents don't have any other heroes but him, right? So they could they could basically just do triple coverage, Michael Jordan style on him every <laughs> time he tried to pop out. And and um, it, it came down to, I think, just a misplay from the team as a whole rather than specifically a misplay from this Life Sealer player. All in all, Gorgon, it's been an exciting night of Dota. And I'm absolutely thrilled that one, I got through this game, and two, that I had you alongside to cast with me. This was yeah. quite the first week of CSL Dota. Absolutely, and I think we are going to be back on Thursday with more CSL Dota as well. So Correct. the first day is out, but, you know, come on back, y'all.
Come on back, y'all, indeed. And on behalf of myself, Gorgon the Wonder Cow, and everyone here at CSO, we would like to thank you for tuning in. Before we head out, we would like to give Band Gaming, our sponsor, one last shout out. They have been instrumental in helping CSO happen this season. So we're going to throw it over to Band and then wrap it up for the night. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on Thursday. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. Only fourteen ninety nine. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.